We've got a lot of tools in our workshop, and some time ago, after posting one of our videos on Reddit, somebody commented that our DIY pressure chamber is just a bomb with extra steps. And I can't help but agree. If you look closely in our last video, the pressure inside, which is normally useful for testing various underwater drones which we then teach how to build in our course, over time weakened the plastic end cap. And over time, it's more than likely that it's going to harm us extensively. Now, that's not the only deadly tool in here. We recently acquired these resin 3D printers, which in short, are poisoning us every day with their toxic fumes. We also have a number of other things that eventually are going to lead to sudden or accelerated death. That's why recently we had a revelation. We are just 22, a lot of time ahead of us. So today I'm gonna fix every single thing that will eventually kill us in here. And we'll also test exactly what it takes to make the DIY pressure chamber a bomb, with extra steps. Starting with the printers. It might sound like an overreaction, but the fact is resins produce toxic volatile organic compounds and breathing them in, especially every day, causes cancer. And it's way worse than FDM 3D printers like those in our background. My solution is relatively simple, yet non-obvious. For example, people before me connected ventilation pipes to the enclosure itself. However, my argument is that most fumes exit the printer while operating it, so when opening the enclosure, and also when you leave the leftovers after the print on the table. That's why I'm building this large hood, which will suck out the air from the room. These are the holes for the ventilation pipes, and I'm using a coupling design made by ones in the six side. But first let's attach it to the ceiling. For that I designed these little handles which go onto the metal beams. I don't want to make holes in this. And this structure here is pretty stable. There will be six of them, so... Here you go. Now let's attach it together. Next thing, I got these pipes which need to connect together. And then to this fan. This is how it sounds, it transports the air from here to this pipe. I also added these magnets, I mean, I don't know what I need them for, but I guess they do something. The both ends of the hood will be sealed with these. The second to last thing is to add the box for the leftovers on the table. This is obsolete now. The new solution is to close the sealed box immediately after each use. Perfect. And now we can connect it to the ventilation. However, well, I have a bit of a problem. The ventilation doesn't work. Okay, so here's the story. I went to the, what you can call a person in charge of the ventilation in this building, and he said this. I only recorded the audio. I came in and sat at this chair, but then he sat at the end of the table, so I moved closer. After that conversation, what are my options, really? I don't have much time left, we don't have another room. Well, shit. I think there's just one option.
Okay, the rest of the fixes ended with a success. Speaking of, these two are very quick. I bought two items. The first one is useful for virtually any reason we get hurt while working in our workshop, but it's commonly used for healing wounds. First aid kit. We have a solution for everything. The second item, this one is more about security. If anyone breaks into this place and sets up booby traps, I'll instantly get notified all the way from my bed. A security camera. The camera scans the QR code and it's ready. <gasps> Now I can move it around remotely, record, get motion alerts and many more. That's it. And while we're on the topic of security, let's get to the second to last fix in this video. Imagine someone anywhere in the world targeting us specifically because they think we know too much government secrets, which of course we don't. They get our address, come within working hours and this time eliminate us. The point is, we are very vulnerable as of right now. This fix will require me to head over to my desk. So, in order to do this, we'll need to open the browser and search for a VPN. Uh, like this one. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Uh, exactly. And let's get this. So, let's just quickly set this up. It should be quite easy. If you haven't noticed already, somebody helped us with solving this exact problem. Click here, here. This certain somebody starts with NO and ends with PN. And now my connection is encrypted. By the way, uh, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. <laughs> That's why you can get a 64% discount and 4 months for free on NordVPN just by using our link below. What I just did is I changed my IP address to a Brazilian one so that nobody on the internet knows that I'm secretly all the way in Poland. I mean, I just told you, but the thing is, while searching the web, I'm simply an anonymous Brazilian. I also turned on web and file protection, which prevents websites from tracking me, prevents phishing attacks and scans for viruses, and then dark web protection, important because that prevents my account leaks. It's kind of a no-brainer in the sense that it's the simplest way to be safe on the internet, which as you know, I'm all about since the beginning of this video. If you also love safety or just would like to watch the investigations of Hong Kong secrets on view, which you normally cannot access from any western country, I mean look at this intro, then just use our link in the description, it's nordvpn.com slash cpsdrone. And also Nord has a 30 day money back guarantee, so that's cool. Alright now, thanks Nord, let's get to the next thing. Okay. First of all, let's test this thing. After pumping it up to about 7 bar with the old car pump, the end caps looked like this. Looks like literally on the verge of breaking. I want to make them much stronger, which will also allow me to use a stronger air compressor, because this one has a limit of 10.3 bar. These end caps are 3D printed, so I was thinking about best strong 3D printing materials that will suit this use case. I thought about interlocking layers, different infill patterns, even new digital, digital filler compounds. But then it struck me. I'll use this one. It doesn't have to be pretty. I cut it to squares with holes and also applied this varnish so that the wood is protected from all the water I expect to explode anytime soon. By the way, the water is held by this metal plate. Not the wood, but the wood adds strength and it's easier to make. 
We can assemble both end caps, the job is partially done, but now let's add the strong compressor. Old fridge compressors are just what we need. You just need to connect the correct wires. <laughs> the correct wires, which normally go to a temperature control relay, and it starts compressing. I just need to connect the tubing, secure the wiring, modify the end of this air gun, and here you go. Look at how much less this end cap bends, at 9 bar. The pressure chamber is now safer just by the end caps being stronger, but there is still a reason Peter still hides under the desk. He's worried about the acrylic pipe breaking. So I bought two extra acrylic pipes and we will try to explode them. Not here though, let's go to the field. Yes. I'll just take it. We placed the explosive far enough from the car. Okay, that's fine I think. Yeah, now the generator. Set up the compressor, and now we can power it on from the distance. Well, it didn't explode on the first try. It went to about 12 bar, and then the o-ring popped out. Here. We really wanted to make the acrylic break, so we temporarily screwed those aluminum parts together and went back. This time... Nothing happened at all. It was actually the compressor which started leaking. Then we even tried propping a soldering iron against the acrylic to make a hole at a large pressure. But that didn't do it either. It just punctured. We had literally only one thing left, and it's this. <laughs> oh. Here. Yeah. And this way the acrylic is hopefully the weakest link. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. We tried everything. Yeah. Oh, it's white as fuck. Break. Break or break. Oh! Oh, shit. <laughs> I would say that's quite dangerous. Oh no, <laughs> my phone is... <laughs> that was a pressure chamber filled with 100% air. But we realized that if you fill it with 100% water, it's not dangerous at all. In fact, we were so confident that we didn't bother going to the field. Oh! <laughs> Because water is non-compressible. It's significantly less violent. From now on, everything we test will be done with the new protocol of 100% water. You might just so be interested in our DIY course on building underwater drones, so link to that below. Now I think that's it. Let us know in the comments if we missed any critical dangers that need fixing.